Hi, I just wanted to do a quick video playing around with a microchip pick. I'm going to see if I can pull the program out of this. Well, basically just the hex file. I'm not interested in the actual source code. And I'm just playing around just to see what we can do. Let me uh, show you what I have here for a circuit. Okay, here's the setup that we have right now. Uh, sorry, I am not an artist when it comes to the whiteboard. But uh, you can see the pick kit 2 there is on the left. It has six pins. Pin 1 is VPP. That's the programming voltage. That goes high when it goes to program the chip. Number 2 there is VDD. That's our positive power. 3 is VSS. That's our negative. 4, that's programming data. So the actual data goes through that pin. And 5 is programming clock. 6 is not connected. Uh, I'm not sure why they used a 6 pin header. I haven't figured that out. Uh, I did open up the pick kit and maybe I'll do a video of that sometime but uh, I'm not quite sure why they made it 6 pins if 6 isn't connected. Anyway, maybe because it's a standard header. Anyhow, uh, you can see that the pick is on the left there, or on, sorry, on the right rather. It's a pick 16 f 876 a the ISP uh, just means that it is capable of doing in-circuit serial programming. Not every chip is. Uh, actually, back in the day, and some chips are still like this, uh, you had to pull the chip out and put it into a separate programmer, program it through a computer, in uh, what they call a ZIF socket. Zero Insertion Force is the acronym for that. Uh, anyhow, I'm rambling on. Uh, let me show you what I have set up on the bench. Okay, so here's my breadboard, and it's a bit hard to tell just from looking at the wiring. That's why I showed the schematic on the whiteboard, but what I have is the PIC programmer connected to the chip on the breadboard. I, I'm only doing it on the breadboard because I didn't really have a socket that was big enough to fit the chip. I do have some evaluation boards that you can actually program the chip directly through, but again, none of the sockets fit. So I'm just wiring it up loose here. It happens to be more convenient. And then I have the two wires up at the top here. That's just my uh, common and five volts. Sorry, I made it go out of focus there. Okay, now I've applied five volts to the chip. Everything should be powered. And I have the Pick Kit 2 programmer uh, program open. Now this is available for free right off the uh, microchip website. Um, but it comes also with the Pick Kit 2 programmer if you purchase it. Uh, the Pick Kit 2, the nice thing about the Pick Kit 2 is it's only about $60 US, maybe even less. Uh, it's one of the cheapest programmers that you can get on the market. That's really what attracted me to it and a lot of other people, I think, too. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to try and we're going to click read here, see if we can get anything back. It says power target detected, VDD source set to target. That's because we're powering the chip uh, externally. So we don't need the pick kit to try to power it. We're going to hit OK. Reading program memory. Aha. And if you look in the upper right, zoom in on this here. It says code protect in red, which means that this particular chip when it was originally programmed from the manufacturer uh, they put a, a code protect on there they didn't want anybody stealing their source code uh, and again I wasn't really interested in getting their source code I just wanted to see if I could get the hex code out of it um, the difference being the source code has the actual C or assembly programming in it um, you could modify or figure out how it works with the hex code it's really just a file that you can load, so you get what you get. You can't modify it, you can't see how it works. Um, but with the code protect on, we can't do anything. Uh, anyway, thought I'd just document this really quick. See you next time.